Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel and thanks for joining me again for the part 3 of automation with Ansible series for 2021 and if you haven't seen the previous parts then it's just not going to work so please make sure you watch them as well and if you're new to the channel then please make sure you subscribe it means a lot to me and today's session is going to be very important because there's going to be the base for you to write playbooks yes today we are going to learn about the language that we will be using to write playbooks and yes it's yaml it's a very good thing if you already know yaml but if you don't then let's begin And there is a lot in today's session for us to cover so sit back relax and let's begin now and today's session we will be learning what is yaml and how we can simplify the learning process so that we can understand this concept better and we'll also look at what are the better options that we have for the ides available for us for writing yaml files or yaml scripts so the playbooks that we write in ansible are a combination of tasks that we want to accomplish or execute on the servers or the virtual machines. But the playbook itself is a written set of instructions, isn't it? And we write a playbook with YAML. So YAML is the whole identity of your playbook as and as every language or script has a file name or an extension, YAML also has its extension as YML, what do you say as YML or YAML. And YAML that is playbook.yml. We pronounce it as YAML, even though it is spelled as YML or YAML. And the steps that we write in our playbook can be executed across multiple servers with the help of the inventory file, like what we saw in the last episode as well. So remember that the extension for the YAML files will be YML or YAML, and we pronounce it as YAML. So whenever you talk to someone or you want to communicate with someone about sharing the file, Remember that you have to say it in a way like playbook.yaml file. You are referring to a YAML file, isn't it? So let's move on then. So now let's understand how we can use YAML. For that, we need to understand Jenny's perfect cup of coffee once again. So to make her coffee, she needs the raw ingredients and the predefined steps like grinding, boiling, filtering, etc. And all these have a perfect sense of becoming a type of data structure like a list or a dictionary. So for now, keep your mind totally away from all the programming languages and computational terms. Just imagine now that we have come here for shopping. And for that, we need a list of ingredients, isn't it? So here we have our raw materials list. In our list, we have coffee, flavoring, milk, water and sugar. And we have a key and a value mapping of our ingredients and the brands that we need to purchase. So these type of data structures are called dictionaries, isn't it? So in a dictionary, remember that you will have a key that will hold a specific value. Here we have a specific brand attached to each of the ingredients. As you can see here, like coffee has peats. We are going for a flavor that is hazelnut. And we are going for milk that is a brand of Dean's. And we're going to have a normal water and the sugar brand that we have here is Domino. And then once we have the list of ingredients, we have another list with the procedure or steps or what we call as processes. So that is a process list. So we have grinding, pressing, boiling, filtering, mixing, etc. So these form a list of process. And when we combine all these data sets, we now get the actual pseudo steps for making the coffee. And now we have a combined data set of a single dictionary of process that becomes a list of process. So when you think of computation, we have to remember that a list is a combination of heterogeneous elements. So it could be a combination of strings or integers, or it could be both of them. And a dictionary is a key value pair where we have an index field, which we call as key, which holds a specific value. And it could be a string or it could be a list or a dictionary as well. So remember these points very carefully. I know most of you are well aware of these concepts, but we have to discuss this because we might have some of our friends who may not be aware of these data types. So remember this very carefully. So here you can see the raw materials is a type of list and the process is also a list. But here the raw materials and brand become a dictionary and the key that you have for coffee will be holding a value 
with the brand name. And similarly, this will be a key and this will be a list of values and this process will be another key and these will be the list of values. And similar to that, when it comes to grinding, it will be a dictionary attached to a particular key which will have a nested dictionary where coffee will be one of the keys and peats will be one of the values. And similar to that, we have boiling and mixing. So if you see, we have the list which is raw materials and raw materials is our key. So as you can see, the raw materials that you see here is our key and the values that you see here become the list of values. And if you have used and if you have already used JSON before, which is JavaScript object notation and it's more like a dictionary and a list in JSON is basically represented or enclosed with square brackets. So if you see here, we have the square brackets within which within which we have the list of values like coffee, flavor, milk, water, sugar. So in a JSON, as you can remember that we have a key and if the value is a list, then it will be enclosed within square brackets. And the way we represent it in YAML is basically you will have the key, but instead of a square bracket here, the list will be represented by a hyphen. So any item that has a hyphen will be enclosed within the key and will be formed as a list. And I can show you an example of this as well, where we can watch the real time conversion of a JSON to YAML and you will see how a dictionary type is represented in YAML as well. So there are a lot of sites that you can go and visit, check how we can convert the JSON structure to YAML and you can experiment them yourself as well. So this is one of the sites called json to yamlcom Here if I just paste the raw material dictionary that I had and when it gets converted to YAML, you can see this is the key and this becomes the value. And this is basically a list of values. And if suppose I want to add a new value in the list of the YAML data structure, then I can just have add a hyphen and I can just add another ingredient. Suppose I want to add cream. So now the cream actually gets added as a value in the list of values that we already have. If I want to remove these two, I can just remove them and they will get removed in the JSON as well. So this is how you represent a YAML structure. Okay. And remember that the spacing and indentation is very important. And that is what we will discuss next. And similarly, we have another list called process where we have the grinding, pressing, boiling, filtering and mixing. And same way we have a dictionary where we have a key as a process and the list of processes. And here as well, we can see the YAML representation states it as process as a key. And these are the values which are represented with hyphen. Next off, if we want to have a bigger and better data structure here. So as we already know the example that we have seen before, like we have the ingredient process, grinding, boiling, mixing, and these have the nested dictionaries as well. So these become a whole data structure. And this is the data structure that we have. So we have the ingredients key, which has the list of values, process, which has the list of values for processes. And then we have the grinding, which I already told you will be a dictionary, which has coffee as the key and peats as a value. So this becomes a nested dictionary for us. And here as well, you have mixing as a key and which has a dictionary and milk becomes the key and true is a value. Suppose I want to have milk but i don't want to have sugar then i can disable the field by using a boolean value such as false and what is the number of cups that i want i want one so i can make a coffee based on the desired values that i have this is just a structural representation of how a json looks like and the same way when it comes to yaml as you can see here we have the list which is represented by hyphen but when it comes to nested dictionaries you have to remember that you have the key here and the next key also will start with a proper indentation, but there will be no hyphen because this is not a list. This is a nested dictionary. So once you have added the first key, then you just need to go to the next line, add a space. Then you can just give the key name as coffee. Same way we have colon here. You can add the colon and add the value for yourself. And we can see this in the YAML converter as well. So let's go there and check that out. So I've just copied the values we had and I'll just paste it. So as you can see here, this dictionary has been converted where the list of values have been represented by hyphen 
and here where we had the nest dictionary it is being represented by the key and the key again starts here and this is the value and this whole thing becomes a nested dictionary okay so if suppose i want to add another key here i can just add it like um, hello colon anything any value okay so this is how you add it so if suppose i want to remove anything then i can just delete it and it will get removed but remember one thing very carefully the best way to validate your yaml is to convert it to a json and it should be a perfect json then only you will get to know that yes your yaml is properly validated you already have some websites that can help you validate your yaml but your yaml should be a perfect representation of the json structure but that doesn't guarantee that it will be perfect in the sense of execution because there may be indentation errors which might hamper and which might cause a, a rift in the way the json structure is represented in which the json structure is represented so we will check that next as i told you before that we will be understanding why the spacing and indentation is very important for us in yaml so let's suppose we have this ingredient and we want these three to be the list of values isn't it so i'll just expand this so these three are my list of values so coffee flavor and milk are the ingredients and here as you can see milk milk has three independent values which makes milk the dictionary or another dictionary within the list and which has dominoes that is a brand and the low fat category and it is toned okay so these are three properties of milk not the ingredient itself so that is why we have ingredients as the main key and these three are the list of values within which we have another milk which becomes the key here and basically which has three values in its own list so let's suppose i i will show you this in the yaml converter as well and you can see that very easily as well so let's suppose i paste it here so as you can see here this ingredient has three values 1 2 and 3 so this is one of the values there is a second value and this is a third value which becomes the key for us because this becomes a nested dictionary within itself so milk has additional properties or the metadata it has so milk has three additional properties and let's suppose there may be chances where you have messed up with the indentation so here there can be chances where you have messed up with the indentation here so this blank space that you see should be common for three of them otherwise there will be a lot of problem we'll see why so let's suppose you messed up with the indentation and you did not provide any spaces here so what happened is the toned value that was already present here got shifted to ingredients but toned is not a value that should be present in ingredients isn't it that is the main reason why indentation is very important for us see if we missed out on giving a space here the value that should be present under milk went directly under the ingredients and this is just a funny way of uh, representing an example but if suppose that is a very huge configuration then you will be cracking your head because you will not be able to find the exact error because that will not show as a part of the error itself because that is a perfectly fine yaml but it does not represent the actual configuration isn't it so let's take this example and we'll paste it here so if you see here now what happened is the value that was toned that was inside milk in the part of the list of milk uh, the metadata for the milk is now outside of that and has become a part of ingredients just because i did not add a space here so let's suppose i add the space here it will get inside the list and this is the dictionary that i want now let's suppose i just remove these two spaces as well so now what happened is these two values that were a part of the list inside milk are now a part of the ingredients list which is not the perfect configuration for us so we have to be very clear and very careful about the spacing and indentation isn't it that is what we saw right now and similarly you can have boolean values as i already showed you before so you can have yes or no and you can have a true or all caps true or false and these are the boolean values that you can use and there are two ways that yaml tells us that we can use the multiple lines so the first one is literal block scalar 
So in little box scalar, what happens is it preserves the integrity of the backslash n or the new line. But in folded block scalar, you don't have it. It will just consider this as a single line. If you don't believe me, let's go ahead and see that example as well. So here actually it is trying to preserve the slash n. This is called literal block scalar. And when it comes to folded block scalar, here it does not preserve the backslash n or the new line. As you can see, there are no new lines that have been preserved here. So that is the main difference. So the literal block scalar will be represented by the pipe symbol as you can see here. And the folded block scalar will be represented by the greater than symbol. The next one is also very important, the comment section. So just like Python, you can place a hash and you can write the comments as well. If I go back and if I have to write a comment here, I can just add a comment like by giving a hash, that space. Hello world comment. So this is the way I can add a comment as well. And just like strings, we can make use of quotes. As you know that there are two types of quotes that we use. So we have single quoted strings and we have double quoted strings. And the difference between the single quotes and the double quotes is that in the double quotes, you can use escapes or escape characters like slash s slash d. And there is a list of allowed escapes that can be found in the YAML specification for 1.1 and 1.2. So as you can see, here, we have the sample text hello slash t hello within the single quotes and this is within the double quotes so if you want to see the difference so as you can see once it is converted to json you can see it is carefully accepting the escape character so so whenever you are planning to use a escape character then make sure that you have your strings enclosed within double quotes and the very next example that we have here is also very important as a part of the concept that is called expressions in yaml so here in YAML, we can replace a value in a variable enclosed within double curly braces in the runtime. So if you have used Angular or JavaScript or any templating languages, you might be very well aware of this. So the example that you see here, the description, the file belongs to variable which is enclosed within double curly braces and user. So this value, that variable that you see here will be replaced in the runtime. So let's suppose you want to assign a username to this. So when you're printing this, uh, when you're printing this line, what happens here is you will get like this file belongs to XYZ user. So that will be replaced in the runtime itself. So this variable that you see here, you can assign the value of your username and it will be dynamically populated during the runtime of your playbook. Handy, isn't it? And you can also create a dictionary within YAML with this syntax as well. So this syntax as well. In YAML, if the value actually starts with a single curly bracket or a single curly brace, and has a key and ends with a curly brace, it actually represents itself as a dictionary. So if you want to test it out also, we can do that. So if you see, if I printed it here, if I pasted it here, so this becomes the key for the YAML code. And here, this becomes the key and this becomes a value. So whenever it starts with a simple curly brace, anything after this, which has a colon becomes a key and this becomes a value. And you might think what, if there is a space in between the characters. So if I do a world space hello, then the world space hello actually becomes the key of the dictionary. And what if we have blank spaces or what we what if we have special characters? So it gets rejected basically because we don't have any quotes here. So let's suppose if I want to give quotes here, can I give it? Yes, you can give and that actually will support the escape character. So just now we saw how we can actually make this and that does not affect whether you have spaces in between or not. It will consider it as a single string. So remember that very carefully. So don't get confused when you have anything regarding this. Okay. So I hope you got a very brief idea on how we can use YAML. And this is not the session where we are going to discuss about how we can create playbooks. I just wanted to make a short session on how we can use YAML and that is what we will be using to create the playbook. So it will be easy for users who don't have that much of exposure to YAML so that they can also learn it. They can also practice it. And when we move on to the critical stuff like creating playbooks, it will be way easier for them as well. And for myself as well, I'll also get a refresher, isn't it? And there are multiple IDEs that are very useful for us. They are already available to create playbooks. One of my favorite IDEs are mentioned here. So Atom, Sublime Text, PyCharm or Visual Studio Code. You can use any one of them. And yes, we are at the end of the part three for Ansible. 
and we have learned today a lot about what is yaml and how we can use yaml effectively and we also discussed on what are the ides that we can use and the next session will be on the id itself that i will tell you like what is the id that i'm going to use for the session and if you did like the video then please like share and comment on what you liked what you didn't and if you are not subscribed yet then i would request you to please subscribe to the channel and help it grow and i will meet you in the next session for ansible until then it's pythonic signing off